Prayer and intimate fellowship with God. Wow, that's awesome. Hear that, honey? Prayer and intimate fellowship with God. Mm -hmm. So churches are cold because, because nobody's praying. Is it a joy to us or is it a duty? If it's a duty and, and obligation, we're missing it. <coughs> we're missing sweet fellowship with God. It doesn't have to be an hour, a few hours, all the way maybe sometimes. It may just be God, God would rather have five minutes of our heart off, offered up to him in fellowship than, than that five minutes plus another 55 minutes of, of, of well, okay, it's, you know, I got to pray long, you know, because it's so, because I got to be spiritual in the end. What is spiritual is offering God prayers and offering from our heart, yes. from our heart, face to face with Him, Him, glory, yes. the Word of Lord, in intimate communion with Him. I, 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 I used to come in here and pray in the morning and you know for maybe my motive was a little wrong for see how long I thought to go and, and, then, and then sometimes it was the Lord prompted me to go on and on sometimes I confess that it was out of a thing like well you know I gotta be spiritual I gotta pray long and so maybe an hour of that was, was spiritual and the other three hours that I went were just <laughs> I could have been out reading the word or doing something else you know he wants that fellowship with us. So everything, everything, everything depends on prayer. Everything in our life. Discouragement and defeat comes because of, of little prayer. Amen. And we have we have to be on guard not to let busyness get our time for God. Amen. I don't I haven't prayed long in the mornings for a long time. But I've given him, I, 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 but I've given what's from my heart, amen. I, I've really given 30 minutes of prayer in the morning from my heart than to drag it out. Yes. And have an overkill that means nothing to him that doesn't bless him. That is really not an offer, amen. Right. Right. Now there may be times when the Lord draws us into long prayer. And that's where we need to be sensitive with the, the Holy Spirit and, and obey Him. Mm -hmm. Kevin, it, 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 it's too hot back here. It's like you may need to turn the air on back right on the road. Just check the check, pictures, check, 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 please. But we had the heat on back there. It's, it's warm now. But, but everything depends on it. Our victory in the day, our victory over temptation, our victory over, over the enemy trying to shoot darts in the back, you know. A.W. Tozer said this, the true Christian experience is direct knowledge of God. It is intimate fellowship with two personalities, God and individual worshiper. <laughs> I like what Watchman Deeds wrote in his book. I'm reading he's, he's talking about but God had his way being a normal Christian when Christ comes in, came into our life, two people now occupy this house. Somebody's got to move out, or there's not going to be anybody getting along with each other. It's like two women in the kitchen. You know what I'm talking about, women? It, it's like having your, maybe your sister or somebody come and stay with you for a while. And you know, they just kind of live there. After a while, you know, there's like a honeymoon period there, and, and, and it's good fellowship. But then after a while, you start getting on each other's nerves again. Somebody's got to go. It's necessary for peace to be there in the house. You're God's heart. Somebody talking about in KPM. Be in the house, be in the kitchen. Yeah, yeah. Stay on the stay on man, go in the oven. You know what I mean? The union of our of our soul with God in Christ is 
process. It's a process. The union of our soul with him. And that fellowship we have with him. It, money can't buy it, church. Amen. Money can't buy it. It's not worth it. It's not worth letting things come and get our day and, and everything and, and everything under the sun will. But we we have to the word says to guard our hearts with all diligence. None of the Holy Spirit that wasn't in my mind. For out of the flow of the issues of life. Guard our heart with all diligence. If if you got a busy day, I would encourage you to don't go out that front door without having a few minutes with God. Amen. I ask him daily in the early in the morning for his grace. I just walk this walk through today. See, because I, I'm not the most intelligent person, the most intelligent person in the world. My wife is way smarter than me. But I know one thing that I can't. Do this. I'm, the Lord is teaching me over and over and over, and over again now. I cannot get to this day and walk this walk with Him without receiving His grace to do it. Because I'm telling you, if we don't, we ain't dead. Jesus said to die today, I'm off my notes now. The Holy Spirit's talking in there. I die today. Word says, I die daily. Well, we don't have that intimate fellowship with him in the morning time. Somebody just might be tempted to move back into the house. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. And we, we got, you know. See, God, God's estimation of us without Jesus and his mercy is we're, we're useless. We're, work, we're, we're workers, we sin, and habitually, and the only thing God's remedy was when he nailed Jesus to that cross, he nailed Jesus to that cross. That's God's estimate, that's God's remedy for sinful humanity. To nail that sin nature itself to the cross. Now, I, I, I'll be the first to tell you that Many, 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 many days have gone by and I haven't, I haven't, I jumped off the cross. <coughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Haven't you been there? Paul oh, wrote, I am crucified with Christ. Yet not I, Christ lives in me. So, God wants us dead. <laughs> Amen. God just wants us to do it. I mean it to ourselves. But we go kicking and screaming, don't we? Well, prayer is a good remedy for keeping them staying on the cross, I mean. But but the good thing about it is, is that we didn't stay on the cross with it. He rose. Yeah. And we rose with him. Praise God. Hallelujah. The word says the sin shall not have dominion over us. That's right. How, how do we overcome these, these things that, that we said? Well, Romans before we say between Romans 6, I'm still off my notes. Romans between Romans 6 and 8, where we will see that that Paul said, I reckon myself dead. That means when, when, when you see that storm coming. And a temptation or whatever it is, or, or somebody won't knock on the door and move back in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Reckon, reckon that person dead. Well, you wouldn't let a dead person back in, would you? Thanks for getting kind of stinky. Yeah. <laughs> it's like when we went down to our car and saw a few weeks ago, and we said, that's a one body. I went into the, the trailer there to, to kind of search things out for Tammy because, you know, and, and something just stopped, man. Oh, man. It was in the closet. Oh, man, door. Oh, my God. 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 O
pulled the air of a bucket in there, a pail, uh, a tote in there, and you know, I set some one bite out in that closet. Well, the little mouse got up in there, got to get in that one bite, couldn't get out. There, there is a little decayed cell for us. And it's gone. I take that thing out a few yards away. So, it, it's a daily struggle though. And if, if we don't, back to the prayer, we don't find that point of intimate fellowship with God in that in the morning time early. They <coughs> grow early out of the city. Early. See? Now, wrong at, here's some wrong at attitudes about prayer, okay? When all else fails, it's time to pray. <laughs> you ever been there? Yeah. Oh, that was things. When all else fails, it's time to pray. No. It's time to pray right, right from the get-go. Because if, if we wait till all else fails, then it's, it's the dead man trying to do it himself. You know? Got a zombie walking around trying, trying to do the will of God that don't work, does it? Amen. But but uh, we must not receive the modern trend of seeking God just for the benefits. Here, here's another thing that I see in the body of Christ that's messed up. Like us, God wants to be loved for himself and not for what he can give. Right? So Anymore, I don't pray for God to meet my needs. It's okay to. But I just thank Him because I know He already does. He already has, amen? So, He wants us to know that when we have Him, we have everything. And when we have Him and everything, we have all the rest, amen? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness. Everything, all this thing, extra, will be added to us. Amen. But why do we go so many times praying first the extra? Matthew 6 and 33, like I just said, seek you first, the kingdom of God. First, should we not just thank Him and not beg? Amen. That's the essence. I think that's the essence of faith. I thank you, Father, that you know my situation. And Lord, I thank you that your grace is sufficient. Amen. Okay. In this country, the country of self-seeking that we have, we, the church, have taken on the idea of creed that God has become our servant instead of being, or instead of us being God's servant. That's A.W. Tozer talking about. So many of us are using God and I'm not saying these people are. I'm just saying it, it's a common thing I've been in the body of Christ. Using God to get a job. Using God to get safety. Using God to get peace of mind. Using God for success in business. And, and at last, using God to provide heaven. Why are you here? We get that way sometimes, don't, don't we? I think if we were all honest, we, we have all been guilty of that before at some time or another. Ignorantly, you know, nobody sitting here would use God intentionally, I don't believe. But, but when we when we pray that way, we do. Okay? Here's some here's some popular Christian books that back up what I just said. Now, I won't mention any names. You walk through Walmart to grab the book session, you know what I'm talking about. Every day is a Friday. How to be a happier, how to be happier seven days a week. Your best life now. It's your time. Become a better you. Seven keys to improve your life every day. Uh oh. Yeah, I'm <laughs> You can, you will. Eight to nine qualities of a winner. Break out. 
find ways to go beyond your barriers and live an extraordinary life. Here's the way to live an extraordinary life. Meet God in the morning in prayer Amen. and fellowship with Him. Seek Him, seek him for, for who He is, the God of love and, and, and His tender mercies. Amen. Not, not to make my life better. I praise God that, that, that when I receive the Lord, nobody led me into a sinner's prayer. I just simply believed. 